In a previous video, we have looked at the state variable control approach, which consists of three steps, modeling, analysis, and compensated design. This video is an introduction to the modeling step for linear systems. For this introduction to state variable modeling, I am going to work through a simple modeling example using the classical approach and then work through the same example using the state variable approach. In the classical control approach, one describes the dynamics of a system using transfer functions. The modeling process consists of the following steps. Derive the differential equations for the system. Transform the differential equations to the Laplace domain and rearrange things to get the transfer function. One then uses the transfer function to analyze the system dynamics and design a controller. Let's look at a simple example. Consider an object with weight m experiencing a time-varying force f, which is the input, as well as viscous friction with coefficient b. The output is the displacement z. The differential equation is given by Newton's second law, where the sum of the forces is equal to the mass times the acceleration of the object. After applying the Laplace transform to the di differential equation, we get this equation. And after rearranging terms, we get this transfer function. In contrast to classical control, in the state variable control approach, we stay in the time domain and describe the dynamics of the system as state variable equations. The modeling process consists of the following steps. We start at the same place, deriving the differential equations for the system. We then choose a set of states and define the state vector x. Lastly, we manipulate the differential equations to write them as the following two matrix equations called the state variable equations. The first equation is called the state equation and the second equation is called the output equation. Here, x dot is the derivative of the state vector, a is a constant matrix, x is the state vector, b is a constant column vector, u is the input, y is the output, c is a constant row vector, x is the state vector again, d is a constant scalar, and u is the input again. The state variable equations therefore describe the dynamics of a system as a set of first-order differential equations. Let's look at the example again. The first step is to set up the differential equation which we derived on the previous page. We call this equation 1. The second step is to choose the states. For this example, we choose the velocity z dot as the first state and the displacement z as the second state. The state vector is therefore given by this vector. If you are wondering how to choose the states, this is not always straightforward. The state should represent the dynamic state of the system at any point. Informally, it means that the state should capture everything of interest that is currently happening in the system. Note that the choice of state vector is not unique and there are in general infinitely many valid choices. A useful rule of thumb is that the number of states should be the same as the order of the system. In our example, we have a second order system, so we have to choose two states. It is also usually a good idea to choose states that are physically meaningful. The third modeling step is to construct the state variable equations. With our choice of states, the state variable equations should now have this form. We therefore have to manipulate the differential equation such that we can write the derivatives of the states in terms of the states and the input. We also have to write the output in terms of the states and the input. We see that the differential equation contains the derivative of the first state, so we divide by m to write the derivative of the first state as a constant times the first state plus a constant times the second state plus a constant times the input. We then fill in the first line of the state equation. For the second line of the state equation, we see that the derivative of the second state is equal to the first state z dot. We therefore simply write down that z dot is equal to 1 times z dot plus 0 
times everything else and we fill in the second line of the state equation. For this example, the measured output is the displacement z, which is the second state. We therefore write the output as 0 times z dot plus 1 times z plus 0 times the input f. This allows us to complete the output equation. At this point, we have determined the matrix A, the column vector B, the row vector C, and the scalar D. These quantities describe the dynamics of the system, and we can use them to analyze the system and design a compensator.